Well, there she sits. It's not uh, heading out on the water this week. Hi, everyone. Yukon Bob here. Welcome to another Yukon Bob video. Not heading out on the water this week. It's one of those uh, types of week again, types of weeks again, where the the weather conditions have just not been all that right. Lots of wind blowing. It just seems this summer in in the area that I live in in the Toronto kind of area, there's been a lot of wind. Temperatures have been okay, sunshine has been okay, but we've had a lot of wind. It always seems to be kind of blowing and heading to the backyard here, always seems to be kind of blowing and you never seem to get more than one day of calm weather before the winds pick up again. And I'm trying to get out and do some stuff that's a little bit further away from my normal area, which is an hour and a half, two hours away from where I live. I want to get a little bit further away, four and a half, five hours out, go see some other parts of, uh, of uh, Ontario, get out onto some different lakes, some different bodies of water. So I'm not always traveling the same waters and showing you guys the same things over and over because literally I have made videos four and five times on the same trip. So I'm trying to find some new stuff, but if I'm going to travel that far, what I need to have is uh, wind conditions that are good not just for one day but for two days in a row and I just don't seem to be able to find that this summer the conditions may be good for one day but you don't get two days in a row and if you're gonna go five hours out you might want to get two trips in one one day one the next day and I've just rarely been able to find anywhere this summer where I've had two consistent days in a row of good weather in terms of wind conditions and wind is really the primary thing that I look at first so I thought what I was going to do today is do a little video on how I go about planning a sea dew trip when I have a destination in mind what do I do to kind of figure out what the conditions are going to be to give me the exact best results to ensure that I have a good trip a lot of people have watched the videos and said, hey, in the comments, Bob, the weather is just always terrific where you are. It's always nice and calm and sunny. Well, no, it's not. But I plan it that way so that when I head out on the waters, it is that way. Because generally what I'm doing is trips that are 50, 60, 70, 80, sometimes 150 kilometers long on a trip. And you want to have the right weather conditions. So it's important to, to kind of plan ahead and get those conditions. And that's what I'm going to show you today is a little bit about how I go about doing that. Because I've seen people say, hey, you know, on some of these uh, Sea Dew Forum pages, I'm heading up to Tobermory, which is an area up in the Bruce Peninsula where I live. I'm heading up there next week. Who wants to ride with me next Wednesday? Well, I look at that and say, how can you possibly organize something like that for five or six days out when you have no idea what the weather conditions are going to be like when you get there? Five or six days out just isn't accurate if you're looking for weather information. So I don't know how people plan things that far out. I'm always looking 24 to 48 hours. That means short time for turnaround, but it also gives you the best results to ensure that the weather is going to be good. So that's what we're going to do in this video today. I'm going to show you some of the apps that I use and some of the things I put into planning a trip out on the water. So let's take a look, first of all, at something that I use called Wind Finder. Wind is the very first thing that I look for when I'm planning a trip to make sure that uh, it's going to go okay because the worst thing on the water with a sea dew is being in rough weather conditions uh, at least from my perspective some people love that stuff and that's fine but when you're traveling 50 60 70 kilometers in waves that are a foot two foot high two and a half feet high that's no fun you've got to slow down on a sea dew it's either the fastest thing on the water or the slowest thing on the water from point a to point b depending on what the water conditions are wave action so let's start off with the app called WindFinder. Let me show you how that works. We are in the WindFinder app right now, and you can see Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, the map is zoomed way out to give you sort of the big picture. Now, if we want to find out what the winds are going to be like in a particular area, what we would do is we would start to zoom in just with your fingers pinching the, the screen, zoom in. Let's zoom in here to this particular lake. This is Lake Simcoe. So now we're zoomed into Lake Simcoe. We can see the whole lake, and I'm in the map view. You can see the map is highlighted down below where it says map in red. And I can move the screen around with my finger, this sort of thing. And the map view is the first thing that I look at. I put it in map view, look at the area that I'm interested in, and look at the color. So this is 11 p.m. I'm going to move it back to today, or to this particular point in time. Let's say it's uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. You can see that uh, the color there 
and there's the, look up at the very top. You can see the gradient going across the top of colors. When you're into the purples, that's what you want to see. The purples are very light. Then it kind of gets into a bluey color, and then into a lighter blue, then kind of into a green color, then into a yellow. And uh, those are all stronger winds. So if we look at it here, it gives you little... Uh, wind indicators moving across the screen and then a color coordination. So the first thing you do is you put it in map, you look at the color, the overall color, and you can just kind of quickly judge by that. So we'll zoom in just a little bit more to the lake. And that's 11 o'clock in the morning. It goes in three-hour increments. Every three hours, it'll give you a new reading. This is 2 o'clock in the afternoon. This is 5 o'clock, then 8 o'clock at night. And you can go seven days ahead. Now we're into the next day. Now we're into the next day after that. Now we're into the next day after that. Just scroll the bar along. It tells you which day it is and what the date is. So we'll go back to the current conditions. So we're looking there and we can see that the winds are blowing a bit at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. By 8 o'clock at night, they're more purpley in color, so they have calmed down. Now the thing about this app is it's probably only accurate maybe 48 hours in advance. Anything after that, it's a little bit of guesswork. So that's where looking at the app, it'll give you a pretty good indication of what the winds are going to be over the next couple of days. But when you get out uh, three or four days down the road, it's not that accurate. That can change quite a bit. I've seen it change a lot. But within 48 hours, you've usually got a pretty good indication. The other thing you can do on this is you can go and hit the search bar. When you hit the search bar, you can call up particular areas. I have these, these little blue blue marks here, these little circular blue things, are things that you can touch on and get a particular forecast. The ones with a star on them are things that I have selected as favorites. So let's touch this favorite right here. If we touch that, or we have to close that first, touch that screen, that comes up. Now, if I hit the forecast for that, it's actually going to give me an uh, 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 a forecast printout. It'll give me the air conditions, the temperature air conditions, the sky conditions, and all of that. It's a little bit more accurate than just looking at the map. So this is sort of your second stage. After you've looked at the map and got an idea, you can go in and touch the actual individual forecasts. And again, you can roll ahead day by day. So here's the next day. Here's the next day. And then it kind of gives you in three-hour increments, the same as it does with the map, but this just gives you a little bit more detail. It actually tells you in numbers what the wind is going to be in kilometers and what the max gusts are going to be for a particular time during the day. So we'll get back out of that, get out of that, go back to our map, look at the map again, and there we are. So if we scroll further back, purple is the color you want to see in uh, WindFinder. That is light winds, you know, 7, 8, 10 kilometers per hour. Then if you get up uh, to stronger winds into these sort of colors these and start to get into greens, then the wind is a lot stronger. You're probably in, uh, you know, the 25, 30 kilometer hour, hour winds uh, in, in that range. And then it kind of works up from there. You get into the yellows, like over here, when you're to the yellow stuff, those are very strong winds and you don't want to be seeing those. So that's sort of how the, the Wind Finder app works. It gives you a pretty good indication very quickly what uh, the wind conditions are going to be like in the area that you want to go and you can zoom in and get as much information as you want or you can zoom out and take a look at the really big picture i'm over here in detroit now let me get back over to my area there we go there's uh, that lake simcoe again just north of me so i can take a quick look look at just look at the color it tells me that's going to be a little windy up there for sure and then if i move across and move across Obviously, at 2 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, that's when things are the calmest. If you take a look at that and you look at those little wind icons moving across the screen, look how slow they're moving. And that gives you an idea that the wind is going to be very light then. But that's 2 a.m. in the morning. By 11 o'clock in the morning, things have picked up quite a bit with uh, daytime heating. That'll pick up the wind conditions. And you can see quite quickly what the winds are going to look, at, look like. But as I say, this is only really good for, you know, 48 hours in advance. After that, it's not as accurate as uh, what it portrays on the screen. They have to show you something, but it's just not all that accurate. But within 48 hours, I found it to be fairly accurate. So that's how you use Wind Finder. And it just gives you a pretty good indication of what the wind conditions are going to be like. Big scale, and then you can zoom right in small scale and have a look uh, with the particular area that you want to go to. 
and get an idea what kind of wind conditions you're going to be facing. Well, the sun's actually come out a little bit, so I put my sunglasses on for a bit. So we've looked at uh, the wind conditions now. We know what the wind conditions are going to be like in the location that we want to go to, and we're happy with that. So we're now going to have to plan where it is we're going to launch our sea or our personal watercraft into the water, where we're going to park our truck and trailer or car and trailer. That's what we need to find out next. And just before we do that, I want to mention to you that there is another wind app that you can also use. It's called Windy. So uh, the one that I showed you was WindFinder. There's another one called Windy. I keep both of those on my cell phone. And sometimes I'll just cross-reference them to make sure that they're both sort of saying the same type of information, that one isn't uh, drastically different from the other one. But WindFinder is the primary one that I use, and then there's another one called Windy. So and we know what the wind conditions are going to be like where we're going now. Now we have to find where we're going to park. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. Let me show you that. Okay, here's a, an app that I use to find boat launches, places where you can park and launch your boat on the lake. Right down at the bottom here, the bottom row, there's a, an app called Boat Ramp Locator. It's a free app. We'll hit that and go into that app. And for some reason, it's always in a different language when I go in. So I have to hit a little bar down at the bottom, hit languages, hit the language I want, and then it puts me in the, it seems I seem to have to do that every time for some reason. But anyway, now we're in the app. Let's zoom in again. Let's go to that same lake up north of me, Lake Simcoe, where I showed you for the, the lake on Windfinder. So here's that lake, and it'll show you all the boat launches. There's a scale all the way around. The red means uh, an icon's all the way around. The red means that it's a, a paid launch. The green means that it's a free launch. And you can just take a look. So for example, here, here's a, a launch in a town called Beaverton on Lake Simcoe. If I touch that, it'll bring it up and you can actually get an aerial view of what it looks like, a satellite view. You can zoom in, but only so far, then it sort of loses the image. But you can move it around a little bit and have a look at that. It tells you what the services are. It has parking. Um, uh, does it have a dock? Does it have a marina there? Is there fuel available? All of that sort of stuff you can take a look. It even tells you the angle and how steep the uh, the the angle is getting into the water and whether or not it's a concrete pad or not. So you get all of that information right there. And you can get back out of that. You can look around the lake, look at other things. Uh, for example, over here, here's the one with uh, free parking. But if you look at the satellite image, it looks pretty basic. Um, there is parking and it is free. And you can sort of take a look and just get a sense of what the place looks like from there. And you can do that for wherever you want to go. You can get this app, download it, and then you can have a look, you know, all around Georgian Bay here. You can see all of the places you can launch from. And then you can kind of click into that and just get a better idea of uh, some of the information that's associated with that launch point. So that's one of the things that you can use to find out what uh, facilities are available in the area that you want to go to, to launch your boat and also to park your vehicle and your trailer. So this one I use a bit. Uh, another way of doing things is that you can just simply go to maps, bring up the maps. Where's my maps here? You got to go over here, just go into maps, into Google Maps, Go to the lake you want to go to, get up to this area. There's that same lake again, Lake Simcoe. And then you could type in boat launch and just go search. And it'll also bring up a bunch of boat launches. Some of them will actually tell you that they're public boat launches. Some of them will tell you that they're private at marinas and things like that. So that's just another way. You can use Google Maps or you can use an actual app to kind of find out where you could launch from to get onto the lake that you want to go or the water body of water that you want to get onto, either using that uh, boat ramp locator app, which is a free app, or you can just use Google Maps and type in boat ramps in the area that you want to take a look at and this is what you'll get. It'll give you a pretty good idea of where you're going to be able to go to launch your boat. Should also mention to you that when you're in Google Maps, you can actually click on one of those little icons for the boat launches, and then you can actually bring up the website for that particular marina. You can look at pictures of what it all looks like there, and you can get the costs and things like that. So you can get a lot of information just by clicking in and drilling down a little bit deeper. So I think what we've done is cover a little bit about uh, how to uh, make your next trip out on the water a little more successful and make sure that you get the wind conditions, the weather conditions that you want for 
the area that you're going to. The last thing I guess that I do is then I go into the uh, to the Waze app, W-A-Z-E. It's just a, a driving app to show me how long it's going to take for me to get from where I am to where I want to get to and what the best route is to get there. And then I have it all kind of figured out. So then I know what the weather conditions are going to be like at the location because I've called that up and I've looked at the weather conditions. I've looked at the wind conditions, so I know what that's going to be like, or at least I've got a pretty good idea. I now know where I'm going to launch the boat from, where I'm going to park the car and truck or trailer, and uh, how long it's going to take me to get there and how long it's going to take me to get back. So I hope you guys have found this kind of useful. It's Maybe some of it is kind of basic and maybe you know a lot of this stuff already. Maybe you haven't heard of some of these apps. It's just sort of the process that I go through when I'm trying to decide where I'm going to be going to and what the conditions might be like when I get there. Hopefully we're back out on the water soon. My new Sponsons are supposed to come in any day now along with the new catch can for my uh, sea GTX 300 Limited. And I hope to be installing those uh, shortly and doing a video on that and then showing you how it looks and how it works out on the water. So that could be coming up very shortly. Till then, take care everybody. Stay safe out on the water and we'll see you all on the next Yukon Bob video. Bye for now.